if you are with me, just a little bit of a background why we are now working so much with a, with a crop which was not very well known in the past and it's called sanfoin. Everybody knows about alfalfa. Let me first find out how many people know what forage crops are. Most of you, okay. And how many of you know alfalfa and sanfoin? Not sanfoin, few people, okay. So the imp important thing is to know really that alfalfa is considered the queen of forages in Western Canada because it yields very high, it has very high quality and animal performance. When animals are on alfalfa, either grazing or in the feedlot, they perform very well. And that is the main reason and it is widely adapted to Western Canada because we have probably 100 or so varieties recommended for Western Canada. So when you have that, you know that it is queen of forages, but then it has one major weakness, and that is it causes bloat. And that is the reason why alfalfa is not utilized as much as it should be, although it has all the other good qualities. But we also know through our research in Lathbury Research Center that if you grow or feed sanfoin, even if it is 15% of with alfalfa, then there is no chance of bloat. Bloat is reduced significantly, up to over 90% you can reduce by feeding sanfoin with alfalfa. Why is it? It's because sanfoin has condensed tannins which alfalfa does not have. Alfalfa has condensed tannins, but it is only in the seed coat. But that is not enough for preventing bloat in cattle, because cattle are feed, fed alfalfa before it goes into seeding. And even if it was in seed, it will be so small an amount that it don't prevent bloat. But we know that sanfoin can prevent then why is it not used? Why was it not used to prevent bloat in alfalfa pasture? Two or three things. One, the major one, everybody knows sanfoin will not produce as much biomass as alfalfa would. When I started working on sanfoin, I surveyed literature and that's what it said. Maximum you can get is 75% of what alfalfa would produce. So that is a no-no for most producer groups. And then second, it also will not compete with alfalfa if you put them together. So in a pasture situation where the plant has to compete with alfalfa and the other third important thing is it will not only compete and stay in the stand for long enough, but also after the first grazing it will not grow back. So what happens? becomes a pure stand of alfalfa again. So if you release animal again for second uh, rotational grazing, they will all bloat. And those are the main three reasons why sanfoin was not utilized in the past. I waited, when I came here in 1989, everybody said there are people working, big companies working for producing a bloat-free alfalfa or alfalfa that will not cause bloat at all. I waited and waited for about 15 years. When I didn't see anything, then I thought, maybe I don't have the resources to compete with big companies, but I will try a very different way. Let me see if I can make sanfoin do what alfalfa is incapable of doing. If I grow sanfoin with alfalfa and prevent bloat, that would be it. So my breeding goal was to increase ability of sanfoin to stay in alfalfa stand. That is the main requirement to have a bloat-free pasture. Second, to grow back at the same rate as alfalfa does. And thirdly, I did not actually select for higher yield. But thirdly, when breeders work on these things, they never ignore yield. They have to select for plants that are growing very well. Because the bottom line for everyone, everyone is that 
we will have higher yield. So lo and behold, we generated some populations that were doing all that. As a breeder, I felt very good that yes, I have generated these populations that are doing the exactly what it was supposed to do. Stay in the stand with alfalfa, grow back at the same rate so they can do rotational grazing and third, also have higher yield. But then, nobody thought that this is doable, so they said prove it. Plant breeder does not do graze, grazing. I am trained to do change genetics of plants, genetics of populations. But I had to prove that all those things uh, actually would do things in the, in the field. That is the reason why we had this large grazing study where we had to plant not just one, uh, one population of sandfoin, one Czech population, that is Nova we used, and we also used three of our newly developed populations. We had two acre plots, uh, paddocks for each of them, and four replications. That's why we had 16 plots, two acres each, about 32 acres or so for, for doing this grazing study. Just to prove that the animal performance would be good, the plants would stay where they should be, and third, they will not cause bloat. And most of them, plants staying in the population is plant breeders' work, we could do. But then I had to take help from animal scientists. I don't even, I, my technicians even don't know how to look at bloat, bloated animals and non-bloated animals. And we didn't even know how to do grazing study. It's not a simple thing, it is very, very complicated particularly when you are looking at specific things like which animal is bloating, which is not bloating and things like that. We had students watching them the entire time to figure out whether the animals are bloating or not bloating. And as soon as they bloat, our protocol says we have to pull them out, relieve the pressure so that they don't die because that's what... <laughs> Animal care, <laughs> animal care committee tells us to do. We have to use fistulated cattle and remove pressure whenever we see a bloat, bloated animal. So we did that and lo and behold, we realized that the new populations not only stay in the stand, grow back at the same rate, also produce. The other important thing which we did not realize in the past was when you grow alfalfa sandpoint together, you are expected to get more, much higher yield than if you grow just alfalfa or just sandfoin. So when you have everything going for you, why not utilize it? But the other important thing is, in the process, we developed these populations that are also high yielding. So I will show you what happened in the beginning. These, these plots were seeded in 2008. It, you, we used one of our old alfalfa cultivars, it's AC Blue Jay, which was developed here. And uh, so it still is very, very vigorous. You can see, even though we used Roundup to slow it down so that we can reseed sandfoin into it, it's still there after eight years under grazing. They are grazed. So far, we haven't released animals, that's why I brought you here. And after so uh, one or two weeks, the animals would be grazing here. For eight years, they have been grazing every year, sometimes rotationally, sometimes continuously. So what I'm trying to say is if this crop can be a major crop if we pay attention to it. If we treat it properly, not treat like alfalfa would be, because their growth pattern is different. See, you can see how far ahead sandfoin is compared to alfalfa. All the pink flowers are sandfoin. Alfalfa is a little bit farther behind. And what it allowed us to do after four or five years, the first study was done, that we could prove that it uh, prevents bloat and all that. Then major, we had Nova as check, and we had three new populations. Only two of the populations survived for beyond four years. 
more than 25% in the population. So what that allowed us to do, that allowed us to try to reseed sand foam. We already know that alfalfa cannot be reseeded into a plot that had alfalfa before, because there is such a thing called alfalfa sickness. Nobody knows what that is, but still it is not recommended to seed alfalfa on an old alfalfa stand. It will not survive. Sorry, yeah. That's autotoxicity? Autotoxicity is one of the things, but nobody ex exactly knows what the chemical is or what else is involved in it. Yeah. So that is the reason why, instead of figuring out what the problem is, we said, why, why plant alfalfa to, if we were to rejuvenate a pasture, which is depleted already, why can't we introduce bloat-free legumes that does both, provides protein, if it is a grass depleted pasture, provides protein, fixes nitrogen, and at the same time increases yield and also animal performance. So what we wanted to do is see if we can reseed sand foin into these plots that were depleted. Uh, the, most of the sand foin was gone after six years. So we seeded last year, these plots were seeded to sand foin. This is a, another study that allowed us to do because we had those paddocks that had alfalfa all the, all the time. It also allowed us to see when we were doing the grazing study or looking at bloat, we saw there was one animal which bloated all the time, no matter where it was. That is why we can, we can all, only say that the bloat prevention was 98%, up to 98%. This one animal bloated. So we can't lie, we had to say it's not 100% control, but it is 98% control. But the other important thing we realized is that allowed us to look at the rumen what kind of microflora that animal has, which other animals don't. So we have another PhD student working on this. She is in the University of Manitoba. She is looking at what kind of microflora difference we have with bloated and non-bloated animals. So actually, when you do some of these things, you can have other ideas to work on, to get to know if we can find that some of the bacterial populations are beneficial for cattle for preventing bloat, that would change the whole situation. We can probably inoculate the animal stomach with those bacteria, but we are not there yet. We are working on it. We're trying to identify populations of uh, bacteria that are actually doing some of this. Go ahead. Irrigating, irrigated or dry land? This, is, this part is irrigated. But we had the same test in swift current. There the growth patterns were different because it is so dry. Their sand points survived better than they did here. But they also grazed for a very short, very short time. They it did not regrow as rapidly as it did here. We could have three grazing cycles here per year, whereas they could only do twice. And that uh, somehow, and the, uh, on the other important uh, difference was they did not use AC Blue Jay, which is the Western Canada control for irrigated alfalfa. They used uh, Grazeland, which is a much less um, vigorous, <laughs> <laughs> less vigorous plant uh, compared to AC Blue Jay would be. So both of them, uh, because of these differences, there the sand points survived better, and they had no bloat at all. Here we had to, because we were uh, unsure that what would it do to plots that had nova, which uh, was already depleted, what it would do, that's why I think we uh, also included alpha sure to our uh, water to prevent bloat, so that there would be no bloat for the grazing cattle. When we had five each in the paddocks, there was a large number. And they were, we couldn't have that many fistulated cattle. We had to go with intact cattle. That means without fistula and all that. And we used Alpha Sure to prevent bloat. Because bloat study was done very differently. We had to be very, very careful. We can't look at 
60, 70 animals at the same time. So we did it in a very different uh, scenario. Any other questions? Uh, just wondering, is the palatability across the two plants the same for a grazing? Uh, sometimes it's uh, sand, sand point is even better than alfalfa. And one other question. If this was baled, would the bloat reduction be the same? Same, the yeah. Bale? Exactly, exactly, exactly. And I think I will show you one, one range which was seeded in 2008. That is one of my newer populations. That one probably would become a new variety uh, in one or two more years. And that, that one is, was pure stand. It has survived for eight years under grazing. So what I'm saying is that we did not pay attention to crops like this in the past. And that is the reason why they were not very popular, they were not very productive, and we did not know very much about it. We don't have to use any chemicals or anything. Most of the time, our weed control method is give it a mowing. In the seeding year, establishment year, after the crop is about 8, 10 inches high, we give it a mowing. That takes care of most of the annual weeds. It does not go into seed. And the crop then stools out and really covers ground very quickly. But when we do it from the very well, we do it uh, when we establish the stand, we start with a very, very clean seed bed. We spray and everything, do everything right so that it is clean. And the other important thing for establishing forage crop is to seed it only half an inch deep. Don't go much deeper than that. And we have seeders available that can control that depth. If you don't control that depth, then the uh, the stand is not very even, it is patchy. Any other questions? I got one for you, sir. I know okay. if you're going to do a pasture rejuvenation, you can spray a roundup on the, on the pasture to sort of knock it back a little bit to give the sand yeah. a chance. Yeah. Would it also be possible to say, hit it with a lighter rate of a grassy herbicide if the grass came back too much and you needed to knock it back to still give that? What, what we have done so far, we are depending on um, glyphosate to knock them down both grass or legume um, old stand if it is very thick. But if it is not thick, if it is already depleted, you are trying to rejuvenate, you don't have to do any of that. It will, you, you can establish. I have a graduate student who is actually looking into different varieties of sandfoin and sizer milk patch to establish in AC Blue J stand. The first one, one or two ranges are devoted for that. His job is to find out, and this is not the only location. We have four locations in the um, central Alberta, three locations, here one location. And we are trying to see which variety, because I'm a breeder. I don't use anything else. I want to use genetics of these crops. Can we see some populations that would have a different genetic background that can establish better than others in the old alfalfa stand? And there, we are actually, we have treatments. Uh, he has d different treatments. One of them is to spray Roundup before seeding. And another one we have where we are actually cultivating the whole field and reseeding alfalfa and Sizer milk wedge or alfalfa and sand foin together. I guess I was talking more about if you're putting it into a grass pasture. Yeah, grass yeah. pastures, that's what I, I said, that we have a, one of the locations, where is it, Ponoka or? Ponoka has a grass depleted pasture, that's where we are seeding, and one of those treatments is to use glyphosate. And uh, we don't have other treatments at this time, we're just going with one treatment only. Just low, low levels of glyphosate. What's the biggest impediment to uh, implementation and what can we uh, agronomists do about it? In what sense? Well, See, the, the, the key thing, I think one, one or two things that are very important for establishing a good mixed pasture. Don't do it, don't seed 
all the seed in the same row. That's why when we seeded alfalfa and sanfoin mixtures, we had them in separate rows. There the establishment would be much better because then the seed is not competing with the other uh, species. And alfalfa is notorious. Alfalfa has all kinds of, uh, not only autotoxicity, but it can prevent other crops to grow right beside it. So when you know, and in fact, not just alfalfa, any seed, if you seriously look at it, any seed that is germinating, religious chemicals around it, it's called allelopathic effect, around it so that nothing else can grow quickly in that area. That's their survival. That's the way they survive. We think that these seeds don't have a brain, but they may not have a brain like we, we have. But they know how to survive. I had seen, it's so interesting, I was, when I was working on native grass breeding program in Vagerville, I used to go to the mountains to collect plants that can actually establish in a very, very dry, where there is no soil, very, very stressful environment. And I saw on a rock, there would be one plant growing, and that plant has a little bit of soil in there, and that seed is growing there, and the root is going all around the rock to go to the soil. Just think about it. When I brought these seeds and started to look at their, their adaptation, I was surprised to see some seeds will not germinate unless they are covered. And that is the adaptation. Unless they know that they can survive, they will not germinate. They sit there. Everything else is perfectly all right for germination. But that seed will not germinate until it is covered. That means it has some protection. So the plants are really, their adaptation is amazing. How they adapt to, how, uh, to survive and things like that. So we have to take advantage of their adaptations. That is the reason why when I developed these populations, they were all selected under Lethbridge, our condition here. So some of them are not very good when we go to Lanigan, for example, in Saskatchewan. There the moisture condition is very different from here. The soil condition is very different. So what I am doing now is planting some of these populations there and trying to select out po uh, plants that are doing well in those environments. So it may not, the first variety we released was Mountain View. Mountain View probably will not be suitable for all conditions but subsequent varieties. Just like there are 100 recommended varieties of alfalfa for Western Canada. So we have to have a little more patience to come up with second, third variety which would have much wider adaptation. Any other questions? I can talk about this for a whole day. I think when, <laughs> when, we, have, when we have only half an hour. I, so did you say you've read it so it will regrow better now, or are you yes. still working on that? No, no, re regrowth is good. Okay. Otherwise, it won't prevent bloat in the second round. So sorry, and how long did you stay then? Four years it four years? stayed, okay. yeah. Okay. Four years it stays, and uh, I think if we left it for fifth year, probably it would be there. All we need, just for your information, I may have missed it, all we need about 15% of sanfoin in a stand. We started with 50%. After four years, two populations had more than 25% still left. That prevented bloat. But if you go down, say Nova, for example, after first year, became only 5%. Second year, or in the second cut, almost non-existent. So in a situation like this, if you are growing Nova with alfalfa, there is no prevention of bloat. What's the difference between this one, that one, and that plot? Because that one seems to be the thickest. I think you can see this is the Nova plot, which was seeded last year. And uh, it's doing well. After the grazing is done, it probably will not see, you won't see very many flowers in this plot, whereas the other one, you can go and see what the variety is, when the population is. There are three different populations we have seeded. Just check it out yourself. The, one, there is one, one uh, paddock which is pure sand point. I just wanted to see that 
prepared it, uh, uh, show it to you so that you know that it, after even eight years of grazing, that paddock is still producing enough. So when you're seeding, what's the percentage you want it at? We, we seed 50% sandpoint, 50% alfalfa. Whatever is the seeding rate for sandpoint, reduce it by 50%, put it in a different box, and whatever is the recommended rate for sandpoint, do the half of that, put it in a different box. If you use the seed box and the fertilizer box, it would be, if you were side banding fertilizer, it would do the same thing. But nowadays you can have seeder that would have two boxes where you can seed the two rows separately in one go. Some people say that, uh, well, we, can we cross seed? You can try that, but cross seeding was not as effective as it was when you were putting them in different rows. And particularly if you put it in the same row, it's, never, it's, never it's good. not very good. You don't have good stand of all, this, all the different components of the mix. See, this is one, this is pure stand of sand point only. But it was grazed for yeah. eight years. Is this the one you need Mountain View? Is this the mountain? No, no, no. Mountain View different. is not uh, anymore okay. here. We have a seed plot down yeah. there. But Mountain View is already released, so now I don't have yeah. that much interest sure. in Mountain View. I'm trying to work <laughs> on another one that would be a little bit better than sure. Mountain View. But when you can grow graze for eight years and still have the stand, and we don't let it go to seed. If it was going to seed, many people, one of their way to keep um, sand point stand for a long time is they let it go to seed. That means the seed drops and the new plants grow. And that is not what this is. This was never allowed to go to seed. So if you were rejuvenating by letting it go to seed, then there would be other problems with it. That means the, the productivity, it would look nice, it would look very nice and pink, but the productivity will not be there because it would, you would be using very old variety. Some people brag that they had 40 year old stand, this and that. So 40 years ago, what kind of varieties did you have compared to what we will have now? So I think also there is a little bit of economics involved in these things. If somebody is developing these and making money out of this, then they will be interested in producing newer cultivars and selling it in the market. If you are using only once every 100 years, why would anybody develop a new cultivar? Just think about that. So I think we have to make sure that we are not cutting the seed companies, uh, you know, money-making ideas and things like that. We, we have to pay attention to those things too. Because if a seed company does not make money, they will not produce good genetics, they will not sell you good seed. So please buy certified seed every year, every time you seed. You know that you can have a stand for four or five years. Seed expense is probably the least of all the forage crop establishment expenses. So if you are trying to cheap out there, then you will not get what you were expected <laughs> to get. So spend a little extra money, at this time, I think because there is only one good variety of sandfoin registered for Western Canada or Canada now, I think they probably would charge a little bit high. I, I talked to the company, I said it is not your best interest to charge too high a price for this variety because then you would not sell as much. So keep the price a reasonable one. Yeah. Don't gouge producers at the same time. But uh, I can only suggest to them. I cannot force them. Because that is the part Agriculture Canada does not get involved. We develop cultivars, turn it over to a private company for, for multiplication and distribution. We depend on them to do it for us. So when we know all this, please have some patience with us. We will produce two or three more newer varieties that would have, this one would have 
good uh, um, grazing tolerance, which Mountain View was not bred for. Mountain View, when we were developing that, we never grazed the stands. It was developed by cutting it. I actually took the uh, method that the uh, turf grass breeders use for developing their cultivars. And um, lo and behold, I was so surprised that we were so successful so quickly. Any other questions? I think it is, uh, for me, I feel really good that we have done something for Western Canada, which actually, not just Western Canada. I have now a professor from University of Wyoming. He has spent, he has come here to spend sabbatical with me to learn what we are doing. He's, he heard somewhere that we are working on this sand point thing. And he said, I will spend half a year with you to learn what you are doing. When you were coming, coming through the border, they didn't allow him to come easily. So they said, you are going to steal everything from us? <laughs> Plant breeders always do this. Exchange germplasm and all this <laughs> freely. I think we bring germplasm from them and we give them germplasm for testing and all that. That's the only way I think the whole producer groups can benefit from. We don't have restrictions. We don't think that is stealing. The ideas are actually dozen a dime. So, <laughs> but bringing it to the fruition or success is the most difficult part. Everybody knew 25 years ago that 15% sand foin would prevent bloat, but they didn't do anything about it. So I think you have to spend time and energy to develop something new, think outside the box, so to say, a little bit, so that the industry can have a bigger impact from the work. Okay? Thanks, Syria. I think we're going to head out now, if that's okay. I know you want to keep talking.